Hi everyone, Beast here. Today is gonna be probably the most important video I've created so far. Because we're gonna talk about the NFT security and how to prevent the typical scams we see almost daily in this decentralized space. I'm gonna introduce you to a few terms I believe you must know. And later on, we're gonna see some real life examples how the hackers want to trick us and steal our NFTs. It's gonna be a little scary, but I promise you guys that most of the scams can be prevented if you just follow the basic safety principles. So I think we're ready and let's go! Let's go! <laughs> I will divide this video into two parts. First one will be more technical and the second one will be more about like our human psychology and how to really behave and act safely in this space. Disclaimer first. I'm not a security expert and this video is only for the informative purposes. This topic is extremely complex and you are always responsible for your assets. I will focus mainly on Ethereum blockchain, but these principles can be used everywhere. So I think we got it. And first principle is smashing the like button down below because it helps with the YouTube algorithm so much and it helps to share the message. So guys, please do it and let's go. Let's go to the very beginning and simply remind ourselves, what is an NFT? Your NFT is simply a token with one field that points to a place where the image or other medium associated with the token is stored. The token itself is always stored on blockchain, such as on Ethereum. And all the nodes, all the computers that are maintaining and operating the blockchain are storing a copy of your NFT so that it can never disappear. You might be wondering where the image, the JPEG associated with the token is stored. And here, since blockchain is transparent, we can always check it out before we buy an NFT. Looking on apes, for example, we can see here in the metadata on OpenSea that they are frozen, which means that they are stored in the decentralized storage. In this case, it's IPFS, which is a peer-to-peer -peer hypermedia protocol. Before we talk about the wallets, we need to understand these few simple cryptographic terms. I know it might sound heavy, but it is actually so easy and this knowledge helps you so much. First, we need to understand what is a public key and the private key. Public key is your personal Ethereum address, which is that long code starting at OX and blah, 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 blah. It is safe to share it because it is really just like an inbox where everyone can send stuff. Everyone can see what is inside, but no one can control it besides you because you got a private key. Private key, on the other hand, is right here or here inside. And it is really like a key from door to your house. Anyone who's got a private key can transfer all NFTs and crypto that is on the public address out and to give approvals. So it is why we always say never ever share your private key because whoever gets it can just take everything what is on the public address. So let's talk about the wallets now. We have two categories of wallets. The software wallet, which is for example the MetaMask, and the hardware wallet, which are for example these devices. To understand the functionality, it is just a piece of software that stores your private keys. That's it, no big deal, that simple. So why we keep saying use the hardware wallet instead of the software one? It's because we are sponsored by... No, <laughs> we're not. With software wallet, the private keys are stored inside of your computer. And if your computer gets compromised and gets a virus, the private key will be stolen. And with the key again, you can lose all your NFTs. I have to introduce you to one more simple term, which is a seed phrase. The seed phrase is your only recovery if anything happens to your wallet. It is that 12 to 24 word secret phrase that you write down during the initial setup of your wallet. It is extremely important not to share it with anyone and keep it safe because anyone who's got a seed phrase can unlock your wallet and the private key inside. And if you ever wrote to your seed phrase anywhere digitally, just get a new hardware wallet, really. 
I know it's a little annoying because you have to spend extra 50 or 60 bucks to get a new one. But I assume your collection is going to grow on value anyway, so you just don't want to risk it. There are two most popular brands currently for the hardware wallets, which is the Trezor and the Ledger. As far as what I read, both of them are equally secure as long as you follow the safety principles. I always recommend buying it from the official website because in the past there were some issues in the supply chain that someone got it somewhere, then returned it with already the seed phrase there and the new customer got it and again, it can be compromised, someone can already have the access, so again, you don't want to risk it. You gotta risk it to get the biscuit. Never risk it for the biscuit, you know? So we're almost done with the technical part and we can slowly get into the real life examples. Just before we get there, I want you to know one more term, which is the passphrase. Passphrase is an additional layer of security and is generally recommended for more advanced users. It is essentially one extra word that is added to your 24 word seed phrase and it creates new set of accounts. There are two main reasons why people use passphrase. First, if anyone finds the seed phrase, they still need to find the passphrase, that one extra word, to be able to control your assets, so it's safer. And second, with passphrase, you can actually set up your decoy wallet and you can put a little bit of ETH as a decoy and then hide the rest behind the passphrase. So in this case, when the attacker check your wallet, they see that there are some ETH, but they don't see the rest. So it's a kind of cool concept. Yay, to sum up this technical part, NFT security will always be about balance between two things, the security and the resiliency. If you overkill the security, you might risk it you forget your passphrase or whatever, and you lose access to your NFTs by yourself. On the other hand, if you don't do these extra safety steps, you might risk that someone else get access to your NFTs. It should always be in balance. And even the official website of Ledger says, please don't overcomplicate things. If you want to learn more about this technical safety, such as where to store your seed phrases or how to set up your decoy wallet or what the whales and bigger collectors are doing to protect their assets, I added into the description a Twitter thread by Punk6529 where he extremely well describes everything. With this, I would end the technical part and jump into that psychological one and real life examples. I wanna talk about the attacks targeting a simple human error because it is the most common way how people lose their NFTs. I always recommend creating at least two Ethereum addresses. One is the vault address and you never ever mint or interact with contracts with the vault address. For that, you get a minting address. And if anything happens and the hacker steals stuff from your minting address, you still got your important NFT collection in your vault one. So by this, you dramatically reduce the risk that the hacker takes it all. Of course, this is not 100% because some of the NFT collections requires you to connect the wallet to get an airdrop or the next mint. But in these cases, at least wait for the NFT community to verify the contract and never ever just blindly ape in. And there's one more thing, which is never ever click on links DM'd to you that requires you to connect the wallet. Because this is the absolutely most common way how people lose their NFTs. Now I will share with you three real life examples. And unfortunately with the one, the scammers managed to steal millions of dollars worth of mutants and apes and other NFTs from one of the community member because he just wanted to mint something and it was a fake link, fake mint and the scammers just took it all. It is damn scary and unfortunate but these examples will help you to learn the most because sometimes we are just so close to give an approval and then it's a game over. So let's start with the first one. This is a great example. You guys see Nike just stepped in the metaverse. There is a logo of Nike. There is even Nike.com, the official link. I don't want to click on it because it is 100% scam because Nike doesn't have any collection minting right now and if they have, they would never DM you. But look, when we go to check the link, look where it points you. It doesn't take us to Nike.com, but it takes us to Nike.bar. So now it is 100% obvious they just want to steal your money 
or potentially your NFTs. So we now know never ever click on links like this one. But I was curious and wanted for you to see how the website look like. So I just took a different device where I don't have any wallet and went to explore it. First, it took us to Nike.bar, not Nike.com. So if we see this, it's immediately no go. Second, there is over 1200 minted out of 10,000 already. And you see it goes quickly. There is always some time pressure because they want you to do it immediately without checking the more details. So I'm not gonna click on that because I would lose all my NFTs. But you guys see, this is like a very common, very typical example that we receive messages like that almost every day. The second example is from Discord again. And this time the hacker took over the Discord and put a fake mint into the announcement channel. It is extremely unfortunate because one of the community members actually minted and lost all his apes and mutants because of that. So let's explore it now. So first, Moshi Mochi NFT Discord server was hacked and the scammer posted a fake announcement of a surprise mint of 1000 extra NFTs. Since blockchain is transparent, we can see on Etherscan what happened. People started minting and within an hour, the attacker got over 32 ETH from this fake mint. But it was just the beginning. After the mint, users were prompted to sign more transactions. And this is the scary part. If we look in Larry's wallet, he tried to mint 14 of these NFTs for 0.49 ETH. And here we see that by signing the message, he basically approved all his NFTs, including apes and mutants, to be sent to the attacker's wallet. It's crazy because it was really that simple. And here for the smart contract, he basically approved it without knowing what will happen. Here is the fake announcement that is again similar to the fake Nike example before. It looks more real this time because it is right in the announcement channel of an existing NFT project. Yes, the Discord was hacked and the attacker took full control. But still, what we can see here, first red flag. There is a link mochimoshi.org. But when we check the official Twitter, there is supposed to be a link .io, not .org. So we now know it's the first fake signal. Second red flag. There is some weird giveaway where you can win 25,000 bucks just because of something. This is always fake. And the third red flag, which is really a weird one, that all channels are actually locked so that people cannot comment. This is like, come on, like it never happens. And I would understand that the announcement channel is locked because they don't want to have the mess there. But all channels, it never happens. So to put it all together, we don't know whether Larry was using hardware wallet or the software one. And you might say that it doesn't matter because he gave the approvals by himself. However, with the hardware wallet, you got those extra seconds where you have to approve the transaction. And these extra seconds can really make a difference because you check or you see something that there is something wrong and you eventually decide not to do it. Also, we talked about having two public addresses. One is the vault and second is the minting one. If Larry set it up this way, he would use the minting one for the mint, so the hacker would steal everything from there, but the apes and mutants would be in vault, so they would stay safe. So this extra step would literally save $2 million worth of NFTs. So please always triple check everything. Check the Twitter, check the website, check if the community is talking about, and when it is too good to be true, just skip it, because usually it's just fake. And the last example happened to me a few weeks ago when they tried to steal my NFTs. Someone on Twitter tagged me and I saw a familiar Solana art page, which is probably the most known marketplace on Solana blockchain. I went to check their Twitter and it looked exactly the same like the real one. So here on the left, we see the fake one and on the right, the real one. First thing I realized they have over 100,000 followers but we have not any single mutual follower. So it is extremely suspicious that there is no one who would be following the major Solana marketplace. And then when we zoom in, we see a fake link again, which is not solanaart.io, but it's actually solanaartai.io. So they added one extra letter and got a fake domain. So after this, we know it's fake. But again, just let's explore the page so that we can identify the scam. The websites look exactly the same and there is only one difference. If we check the address, we see again a Solana Art 
I instead of Solana Art. And of course, it took me again to a minting site where I was the lucky one who won something, but I have to mint it quickly. So again, it was like typical pressure scam. Don't do it. Wow, so we covered a lot today. We went from the technical parts to see the real life examples also. I hope you learned a lot. And next time you see a link received from someone, you'll be like, no, 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 Beast was talking about this. This is a fake mint. I'm not minting that. I'm gonna protect my assets. If you made it until here, you're a champ and I wishing you the very best in this NFT journey. To stay tuned, subscribe to this channel and you can always follow me on beast.eat Instagram or beast underscore eat Twitter. Thank you so much, stay safe and let's go.